Feminism has failed. Now, I know I'm supposed to crack a few jokes, and I'm not a humorless feminist, but I don't have a lot of time. I won't be cracking jokes. There's too much at stake. Feminism is an unnatural, artificial and abnormal product of modern-day disintegration, which is the inevitable result of the rejection of all moral and spiritual values. But wait, there's more. In the West, women have been reduced to a plaything of enjoyment and fancy. They have degraded themselves and become objects of exploitation by men. They have neither gained liberty nor achieved equality. Rather, they have lost their natural place in the home. The outcome has been horrendous for social peace and stability. The first quote is by Mufti al Haran Sheikh from the, his 2008 book on morality. The second by Islamic scholar Gulham Safar, 2000. There is a totalizing ideology on the march across the world and it is anti-women. This is not about religion. This is about a global war against women. It's about rights and freedoms of women. The chief battleground is a woman's body. Who owns it? Who controls it? Who covers it? And who hides it? Right now, feminism is failing to mount a response to this attack. Two days ago, a young Palestinian man told the ABC how he smashed his sister's head against the wall, smashed and smashed until he killed her. Khalid Mahmoud explained this wasn't murder, it was an honor killing. His sister had shamed the family by sleeping with a man of her choice. She had to be obliterated for the family's honor to be restored and for Khalid to save face. The police agreed. It wasn't a crime. He wasn't charged. He remains a free man. In some parts of the world, not only do men, fathers, brothers and husbands, own a woman's body and are free to smash the life out of them, they own her virtue. Their identity and manliness is embedded in it. That is an impossible burden for any woman to carry. For the tens of thousands killed or maimed each year, like teenager Ashia, who last year was held down by her Afghan husband as he cut off her nose and her ears because she tried to escape his family's abuse, and for the hundreds of thousands of women who are savagely punished for expressing their free will, honour doesn't come into it. Nor does a fair trial, as Iranian mother Shakina Mohammadi Ashtiani knows too well. Right now, she's facing execution by stoning for having sex with a man who wasn't her husband. The extraordinary thing about the stoning to death of 17-year-old Dua Khalil in northern Iraq three years ago was that it happened in broad daylight with uniformed men, possibly police, standing by watching. The pretty young girl in jeans and a red top was dragged out of her home, pushed to the ground, kicked like a dog, and stones pelted at her until she died. Another honour killing, filmed by the men on their mobiles. You can watch it on YouTube. When 29-year-old Bangladeshi woman Fazilatan Neza came to Australia last year, she could hardly wipe the smile off her face. She kept telling me she was so, so happy to be here. But detecting her smile was a little tricky from certain angles, as her skin is wiped across her face. When Fazilatan was 17, a man threw acid at her because she refused his marriage proposal. Now she travels the world campaigning for the rights of acid victims who are shamed by their families for bringing the family shame. World events and the rise of neo-fundamentalism by young men eager to revive and restore old practices have made feminism more important now than ever. And yet, in the face of this, feminism has lost its voice and therefore much of its power. We just don't know how to respond to the horrors of infallible patriarchal control or the abuse and degradation paid out on women. This is a moral crisis for feminism. Has feminism failed? No, I wouldn't argue that. I can't argue that. Numbers have improved, legal structures and new frameworks have been erected. The scaffolding is there for some. 
that scaffolding is precariously shaky. Feminism hasn't failed, but it is failing, and it's on the brink of failure. Right now, at a time in history when we need a massive feminist surge to fight back rising anti-woman sentiment, we're sitting on our hands unable to respond. Instead, we're bogged down in self-righteousness and trivial discussions about who's a faux feminist. When Monica Ducks targeted me in her book as a saboteur of feminism and an imposter, it sounded like I was being pushed out of club feminism by the snooty head girl with the key. But look, what wasn't funny, and in fact what astounded me, was that the other journalist that Ducks trashed was the late Pamela Bone from The Age. With naive flippancy, Ducks dismissed Bone's large body of courageous work because, and I quote, Later in her career, she started noisily blaming her feminist sisters for ignoring the plight of Muslim women. Why do feminist responsibilities stop at the border? Somali-born feminist Ayan Hisiali speaks of the West's misguided politeness in opting to say nothing and do nothing about the abhorrent abuses and treatment of women and girls that are excused as cultural custom or religious rights. Honour killings, female genital mutilation, acid attacks, forced marriages, child marriages and sexual slavery are among the so-called cultural practices she has in mind when Hisi Ali calls on Western feminists to take on the plight of Muslim women and make it their own cause. Debasement and abuse and the practice of gender apartheid extend beyond fundamentalism and religion. Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf says, and I quote, in its numbers and scale, the systematic discrimination against women outstrips even the wholesale abuses of the 18th and 19th century slave trade. 62 million primary school age girls around the world don't go to school. 520 million women around the world can't read. Ignorance, of course, is a tool of control, which is why the Taliban keeps burning down girls' schools and killing teachers. It is inconceivable to me that someone can watch a mother give birth, pick up the baby, see that it's a girl, and in disgust, throw it into the slop's pail to die while uttering the words, useless thing. Chinese writer Xin Ran Shu described this very scene recently when writing about the gender side and the world's missing 100 million baby girls. I guess at least being chucked in the bin is quick. Other baby girls are slowly starved or simply abandoned for one single reason, they are female. What is it about girls and women that make them so utterly dispensable? In our own backyard, the Pacific region, some of the rates of maternal death are among the worst in the world. 60% of the Pacific nations around us have no laws against domestic violence, which is perhaps why 73% of the women in the Solomons think it's okay for a husband to beat his wife. Recently, Vanuatu's traditional chiefs challenged a 2008 law passed to protect women from domestic violence, saying it contradicted Vanuatu's custom. Traditional cultural practices that assert male authority will always disadvantage women. So why do we kowtow to them? Why are we so ready to adopt a lazy, cultural relativist position when it comes to blatant discrimination against women? So, has feminism failed? Perhaps not for us. Not for you and me, Monica, but you know what? It's not just about us. Thank you.